Hey everybody, welcome back to 9to5Gamers and today's Top 10 Tuesday. Today's Top 10 is going to be Top 10 Animal-Themed Games, okay? Um, and so I got a lot of Animal-Themed Games that I was choosing from, but I made my Top 10. Now, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to these videos. This helps me out tremendously, guys. We're almost to, uh, we're almost to 11,000, I believe. We're super close. So if you're watching this for the first time, subscribe. What's it going to hurt, right? You're just going to see my videos. I'm very non-intrusive, by the way. Um, you might actually enjoy my channel because I don't make 6,000 videos a day and you just get overwhelmed by the amount of videos. I just make maybe one or two videos a week. Perfect uh, digestible content. But anyways, let's get into that top 10. Uh, so starting at number 10, Wingspan. Uh, it's funny too because I'm not a big Wingspan fan, but when I'm looking at my list of animal games that not only I own but also have played, I'm like, man, I honestly would play Wingspan over a couple of these. And so Wingspan ended up making my top 10, even though it's not my favorite game. Um, I, my opinion on Wingspan is that I feel like it is, like it's like, I feel like it's like people's bread and butter. Like I feel like people think it's the best game to ever exist. I don't think that. I think it's a great game. Um, and I understand why people enjoy it, um, but I, 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 I like the game just fine. That's why it made my top 10. Um, but it's just a tableau building game where you uh, have this little aviary and you're putting birds into your aviary. And if you've never played Wingspan, man, you gotta try it. It's actually pretty good. Um, but that made my top 10. I actually really enjoy it. Tableau building. You have this little engine that you build where these birds fire off. I love that mechanic of how you go down the rows and fire off each bird in that row um, and they, their abilities trigger and things like that. Super, super cool. Really, really fun game. Very thinky. A lot of different options you got there. That is why it is my number 10. My number nine is another game that I don't think is my favorite game of all time. But I mean, it, I, there, it's hard to argue that it is one of the greatest games to ever exist, and that's Cascadia. That's why it won an award, right? Uh, Cascadia is a really cool game where you're just uh, uh, drafting tiles to add to your little, um, you're creating like a big park of sorts. I don't even know what you would call it, just like an environment. And then you're getting these little animal tokens and putting them into your environment, and you're scoring based on patterns for each of the animals. Each animal has a way that it scores, but it has multiple cards to score them differently. So there's tons of variety. And Cascadia just came out with another expansion. Uh, my, is it standalone? I don't think so. I think you need Cascadia to play it. But um, just adds more content to the game to make it great. Um, it's decently timed. Like it's not like a quick game. Um, it depends on the people as well, but it's a really fun game. And I think Cascadia is great. That's why it's my number nine. My number eight is a game called Meadow. I really like this game. I actually got this game on sale. I found it somewhere. They had like a ding and den section. I think I got it for like 17 bucks. And um, it's always been really expensive. It's been one of those games that I've been wanting to try, but I've heard great things about it. And I played it and I was like, wow, this is really interesting. You've got this puzzle of a, of a, like a board where you're, you're trying to place these cards out and each card has kind of like uh, an animal or some kind of a terrain or something like that. And those animals are kind of the basis for like this little pyramid you start to build. And there's other animals that you play on top and all of them have symbols. And those symbols, when um, you place a like a bird, for example, if there's an insect under it, you place the bird, the bird consumes the insect because that's like within its food chain or something. It's so interesting the way that they made this game. And I haven't played it in a while and I really got to break it out again. But this game was phenomenal, man. So thinky, so puzzly. Um, I, I don't think everybody will be a fan of this game just because it like I said it is pretty thinky for a game I don't think it's super complex though um, but I just thought it was really cool where you're matching up these symbols and building up this little looks like almost like a little pyramid of, of cards that you're building up and it's super good I really enjoyed a meadow it's such a good game uh, next up on my list number seven is first rat uh, this is a rat themed game but it's more space themed so it could be considered either but since it has rats in it i was like it's fair game and uh basically you're rats that are becoming astronauts or retronauts and you're trying to gather resources while you go up the board and um, the board almost kind of gives you like Candyland vibes the way that it looks but each um space is a different color and provides you with resources that you need to build rocket ship parts. Then when you build and when you get all the parts to build up a rocket ship, um, you gain a bunch of points for that. And you gain points for everything you build. Every piece of the rocket you build gets you points. When you build the whole rocket, you get even more points. When you graduate your rats as to become ratronauts, you get more points. You also collect cheese along the way. There's like shops where you can 
um, uh, get items by spending your cheese. It's like your currency. If you go in debt, you get stinky cheese, which puts you in debt. It's really, really fun, actually. And um, the mechanic of moving, like you have multiple rats on the board that you can move all at the same time, or you can move one a bunch of spaces, or you can move multiple a couple of spaces. Like that whole mechanic is super cool. I love first rat, and that's why it's my number seven. Next up, my number six is the Isle of Cats. Um, Isle of Cats is great, man. If you never played Isle of Cats, um, it is a polyomino game where you're placing cats onto a ship, and your ship has a bunch of little grid spaces, and you gotta try to fill up your ship with as many cats as you possibly can. Cats will score more points if they are around cats that are the same color and the same type, rather, um, and you can only place cats into your ship, um, into your boat, by they have to be touching a cat that has already been placed so sometimes you're not getting the same color and so you're like i'm gonna build green this way there's certain bonuses for placing certain colored cats in certain areas of the ship um and you want to just fill up your ship as much as possible with as least amount of blank spaces because you lose points for all the blank spaces in order to catch these cats off of the island to begin with because you're trying to rescue them um you have to have baskets and you need to pay fish um, to, buy, to, to buy certain cards. You, there's drafting in the game where you draft cards. Those cards allow you to get um, extra cats and different abilities. Um, they let you uh, get first dibs. Like if you play a lot of boot cards, that'll get you the first pick of all the cats that are out there. Um, if you play baskets, you can catch one cat per basket that you played. Um, and there's permanent baskets. It's great, man. Like I love Isle of Cats. It's such a good game. Um, that's why it's my number six. My number five is a game called Everdell. Everdell is just a great animal game, man. Like in that game, you play as these anthropomorphic animals, but your worker placement, there's worker placement where you're trying to work, um, place your workers to get resources and there's cards that you wanna play um, into your city. And then you can only have, I think a maximum of three rows of five. So it's like 15 spots. Um, and so you can only play like 15 cards down, but in order to do that, you got a worker place and um, you only have a few seasons to get all of this done. So you've really got to manage your, your, your resources and your cards wisely so that you can finish off strong by the end of the season. The cool thing is that people that are playing can go into the next season while the other people stay in the same season. So it's pretty interesting that you can kind of maneuver things that way. But yeah, you just get points for all of the buildings that you build and all of the different animals that you collect and some, some buildings will let you get animals for free um, because they kind of like go together. There's like a link between those animals and there's so many different iterations of the game. There's new ver a new version called, I think it's Far Shore. Um, and um, I've heard that that's a great version of the game. If it's your first time playing Everdell, you can go straight for something like that. It adds extra mechanics to it, but makes it a little bit more balanced than the original experience. Um, but the game is is fantastic. The big, the big tree that it comes with and all the parts, everything is just high quality, um, including the resources. Um, but it's such a a good game. Uh, Everdell is my number five for a reason. Uh, number four, Agricola. Agricola is a farming game. I think it's more farming than it is animal, but a big part of this game is having sheep and uh, pigs and uh, cows and different things like that. And these animals, you're going to try to uh, put them into pens and different things like that. And uh, uh, they will uh, award you with food and different things like that. Um, I, I Struggle to think this is necessarily an animal game. I don't think that the main theme is animals, so this was a little more of an iffy pick. I think this is more farming than it is animals, but the animals play do play a big part, but it's such a great game, man. Agricola is made by the, the great Uwe Rosenberg, and uh, this guy makes a ton of games that involve animals as part of the, the game's mechanics and stuff like that. Um, and uh, this just happens to be one of my favorite favorite. I love Agricola. I think Caverna was focused more so on like the rooms and the different things you build in your cave. They're like cave farmers. This one's a little bit more focused on like the animal aspect of it, even though it's not completely necessary for you to have animals, but it's just fun to, to have all these little sheep uh, wooden sheeples that are really, really nice. Uh, but uh, I love Agricola. It's my number four, and I love that game so much. Uh, my number three is Honey Buzz. Honey Buzz is an, an insect game where you have like worker bees, they're beeples, and you take your beeples and you're placing them in different spots to take different actions, and you're building up a hive. That hive produces honey uh, and pollen, and then you use that stuff to get 
points, and uh, whoever has the most points wins. But it's really, really fun, man. And the puzzle of creating the hive and the way that you have to uh, make certain patterns in the hive in order to get a certain type of pollen there. Um, I thought this game was incredible, man. Like I, this is it's one of those rare instances where most of the time I play a game and I'll play a one uh, one game and I want to move on to another game and play something else. But I know a game is really good when you play it back to back and you're like, I want to play this game again. Um, Honey Buzz is a game I got to add to my collection. My friend has a copy of it, but it's a game that I want personally. I just want to find the deluxe copy of that game, see if I can find a copy of that still in shrink wrap. But it's super good. I love Honey Buzz. It's such a good game. Definitely got to give that one a try. My number two, of course, is Root because Root is just an amazing game. Um, you play as anthropomorphic animals who are warring over the same woods, and uh, there's uh, different factions. There's a ton of expansions. I've talked about this game so much on my channel because it's actually my number one game of all time, which which, you know, spoiler alert for in case you ever watch that video. Um, but yeah, I love Root. Root is fantastic. I love all the expansions. I love how each faction works with the different animals. And um, as far as animal th themed games, there's no way you can make a top 10 without Root being in there because Root is just fantastic. Unless you hate the game, then I can imagine why you wouldn't put it in there. But it's still not as good as my number one when it comes to animal themed games. And my favorite game that is animal themed of all time, Ark Nova. Ark Nova is could be a long game and I don't know man I say that and like so many times every time I say that I get people in the comments all the time saying stuff like oh you're just playing it wrong or whatever and I'm like I don't know I just I feel like Ark Nova just the amount of time it takes to set the game up the amount of time it takes to play and the amount of time it takes to put everything away it's just kind of like that's the only thing you'll do but some people swear that they can complete it in like an hour or two um, and if that's the case then more power to you maybe you only play at two players but regardless of that whether i'm playing solo or with two or with four arc nova is a game i will always be willing to play because this game is fantastic um, you're kind of building up this little tableau of cards um, with different symbols and those symbols will allow you to get other cards um, which will just continue to build up the cards have abilities that will fire off um, but not necessarily like a engine builder but more so just kind of like when you play them they, they they have an instant effect and then some of them have a continuous effect I believe and uh, there's a little bit of take that but they're not that it's not that bad um, but then you've got this track of points it's like I'm trying to work on the appeal of my zoo and so I'm trying to go around and it goes around um, like in like a half circle basically and so you're trying to work on the appeal of your zoo but at the same time it's like I'm trying to just get animals into my zoo but I also need to be a conservationist so I need to you know do conservation which is another track that goes in the opposite direction and when both of the appeal and the conservation cross paths that's when the game ends and then you score um but it's i thought that was really really cool the dual track thing and the fact that you have to kind of do a little bit of both and you kind of just have to, you can't just work on just appeal because people will pass you up and win quicker if they do a lot of the conservation conservation gives you a lot of points so you got to do those it's like setting your animals free which is really cool because on you have, you're building up a zoo there's polyomino pieces that you place on your zoo and you make in ha uh, habitats and different things enclosures for your different animals but then when you release animals through conservation, you got to get rid of those animals from your zoo. So it's pretty interesting. I, I, I love Ark Nova. There's, there's so many rules. There's so much stuff to the game. It is complex. It is complicated. But it is such a good game. It made the BGD top uh, 100 games of all time. Uh, I think it's – is it in top 10? I don't even know. It might – it might be in top 10. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, maybe not. But it is super, super good. It, it rose in popularity and in fame uh, for a reason because it's fantastic. That's why it's my number one. Anyways, thanks guys for tuning into this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on these videos. Let me know what are your favorite animal themed games in the comment section. Keep that comment section alive. The more that you guys comment, the more that you like the video, the more that YouTube will say, hey, people actually like this content and start pushing it out there. So please hit that like button. It helps out a lot and uh, if you're feeling generous become a member for three dollars a month or more depending how what you want to do you get some behind the scenes footage and some extra videos off to the to uh sorry you get some extra video content um that you'll get right through becoming a member so become a member it should see the join button if you don't see it you can always look it up on a computer i want to get as many members as i possibly can so that we can continue to fund this channel thank you guys for your support love you guys see you guys later I love First Rat, and that's why it's my number seven.